Hello everyone and welcome to Strange Colony Podcast. I am your only host this week. My name's Vanessa, for those of you who don't know. Jacinta, a lovely, my beloved co-host, unfortunately couldn't be here. So life gets busy, kids get sick, things happen. It, yeah, is what it is. The show goes on. For this week's true crime story time, I am going to be telling you the story of the other Kaipo cult. Earlier this year, I think it was in February, I could be wrong, I don't remember much, mum brain, lots going on. I told you the story about the Kaipo compound. The property is still up for sale, just in case anyone's interested. But uh, there, whilst I was researching that one, I found out about another cult, which I also vaguely remember seeing in the newspapers at the time where some ish was going down. But this week, I will bring you the story of the other Kaipo cult. The Ideal Human Environment. This was the name given to the social experiment that James Salerno was conducting within his cult. He was using his cult members as the study participants and as the observers who were controlling the study. He sold the idea that his group would be able to find this ideal. However, he runs the group with the same brainwashing tactics of all cult leaders. I, yeah, let's get into it. (laughs) So who was James Salerno? He was a man who was once a boy, go figure, who was born in Italy in 1947. Funny this whole Italy Kaipo cult leader thing, because that other cult leader, he was born in Italy too. Something in that. At the age of seven, he, along with his family, moved to Australia. When he was 19, he joined the army and went off to war in Vietnam. Thank you for your service. We appreciate it. But the time he spent serving in the war gave him, gave him the reason as to why he was trying to create the ideal human environment, a environment without addiction, without poverty, without greed, and all of those things that make society less pleasant. After his time in the military, Salerno was a teacher in a remote Aboriginal community. He taught at the local school there. But he also spent time with the local elders. He wanted to learn about their history, their culture, and all of that stuff. After that, he spent some time travelling around the world. And this was in an attempt to research and study other cultures, study other religions, and find out about other social systems. He obviously was qualified as a teacher. He was qualified in nursing and apparently naturopathy as well. He also gained skills in psychology and counselling, although I don't believe he has like formal certifications in those ones. But still, given the military training plus all the other things, that's that's a very interesting um, combination. Between 2001 and 2008, the cult lived in the historic Arbury Park mansion in Oldgate. Oldgate? 
I'm not going to pronounce this right. And this was the first home of the cult. Uh, Oldgate, for those who don't know, is in the Adelaide Hills. Interestingly, this is the childhood home of former... Um, former Liberal leader Alexander Downer. At this stage of the cult's growth and development, it was around 30 to 40 people. Not very big at all. They, you know, a bunch of widows, but don't really raise any red flags. Salerno, he was a self-proclaimed happiness guru. He asked his followers to call him Taipan. You heard that right. The members of the cult had to praise Taipan daily. Oh, hail Taipan! The children were given ranks and made to respect this ranking system by obeying those of a higher rank to them. This was also done to the adults, I believe, as well. But most of the articles that I read mostly said about the children, which was interesting because it wasn't like a respect your elders type deal, except kids had to respect the adults, but then there was their own ranking system within those. Punishments were given to those children who were reported as not complying with the system, the ranking system. And a punishment could be anything from being forced to sleep outside to having no food and even just general labour slavery around the house, which is pretty brutal. I mean, yeah, not brutal. Within the cult, women's rights took a very backward step. I hate this so much, so much. Women were expected to be subservient to all men, not just their partner, but all men. And they were responsible for all the household chores, all the cooking, all the cleaning. All the women together had to raise the children. I mean, at least they had help, but the whole raw, I could rant. It's really pissed me off. Some fierce. They also had to wait on Salerno and these jobs would be like manicures, pedicures, drying him off after he's had a bath, running his bath for him and oh my god it better be the perfect temperature. Hmm. They had to do his laundry, brush his hair, give him massages. Members were encouraged to donate their whole income to the cult and most of them did that. It's why people, why? The older women within the group would also encourage the teenage members of the group to be more involved in these chores and the caring for of Salerno. Caring for. A lot of the cult members still worked. Well, the men did anyway. But they donated all their income to the cult, which is registered. It still is registered as a religious group and or charity, so no taxes are paid on these donations, of course. The money is controlled centrally by Salerno and redistributed as needed to the members of the group. So he's got to decide your needs. Salerno was treated like God and feared by his members. He was revered as someone who could bring hell down upon you. 
and yet some people still idolize him idol worship him that like he's still got followers now his cult is still as far as i'm aware operational it is insane there were allegations that Salerno would have the men and women stripped down naked and wrestle. At the bare minimum, they were forced to strip down naked. Like, dehumanising tactics, humiliation tactics. It is gross. But, so within this cult, no decisions were made without Salerno's involvement. Money, how it's run, what everybody's doing, what you're entitled to, what rank you are, all that sort of stuff. It's all controlled by this one dude. So that ranking system I mentioned earlier. The adult members of the cult were ranked by what is called an emotional quotient. So, like an IQ, but how emotionally intelligent are you? But that was also decided by Salerno. So, I don't know how unbiased of, opi of an opinion he has. More dehumanising tactics. <laughs> All members of the group are not necessarily dehumanizing, but definitely um, the ones that make you lose your self-identity, you know, the things that make you feel like an individual. All the group were required to wear white clothing. They had to participate in morning exercise before breakfast, which was served at seven. So everybody's up. The exercising, all that sort of stuff. They have to wear white when they're participating in anything in the cult. And only the men who had to go to work could wear, like, work clothes away from the cult. And that was it. When Salerno would enter a room, all the members had to stand up and they would put their right arm over their shoulder and say strength and honor just like they do in the movie gladiator and funnily enough this little practice only came into play after they watched the movie together i guess it really resonated with him in 2008 the group moved to Bo does it? Bo does it? Uh, I really should have looked that up. Somewhere in Queensland. But they were only there briefly because in that same year, they moved to a really big outback property in Kununurra, which is in Western Australia. In the Kimberleys even. Interestingly, some of the cult members operate a law firm called Salerno Law. It has offices in, on the Gold Coast and in the Kimberleys. They mostly represent farmers and the like. In 2012, they helped form the brand Ringers Western, which is an outback clothing company. They also run Salerno Pastoral Company, these guys are so high profile. They hosted Prince Harry when he came to Australia. And it's reported that he wore the clothes from their brand. They took him shooting and riding and, you know, outback activities. Major, major bragging point for them. So these guys are pretty well known. Like, they get... The media knows about them, the government knows about them, all that sort of jazz. Like, everybody's curious to see what's going to come from the ideal human environment, this experiment. 
2013 would see a South Australian parliamentary report note that Labor MP Lynn Brower had met with Salerno while touring outback communities. She says, and I quote, he offers interesting insights into education and psychology, end quote. But she doesn't endorse what he teaches. But he had this Member of Parliament convinced that he was simply just trying to find a safe way for people to form conflict resolution and to live safely and in peace and harmony. During research for a documentary that never ended up airing, it was found out that the group would be meeting twice a week to air their grievances with each other. This would be their opportunity to have a therapeutic session and resolve any conflicts within the group. The group were making steps towards dealing with drug rehabilitation, according to Mr. Bradbury, who was the person conducting the documentary, like seeing it, posting it, all that sort of stuff. In 2015, Salerno told The Australian, which is a newspaper, that they have created the first model of the ideal human environment. In order to discover the ideal human environment, he conducted experiments. One of these was giving a chronic gambler $100,000. Now, for point of reference, this money came from people within the cult who donated everything, all of their earnings, all of their possessions, all that sort of stuff. A hundred grand to a chronic gambler, just so that the group could watch a person with addiction. I mean, interesting study, but oh, why? Why? The idea of the project was to try and understand the addicted person and the addiction cycle. All the research projects were funded by, like I said, the cult members. I just, oh, I can't get over handing over all your assets and income. And that was the joining fee. To join this cult, you have to, here's my assets. For point of reference as well, Bit of curiosity here. Salerno never worked a day of his life that he led the group. So leading the group, that was his job. He had no paid work. Also, one of the law partners is one of his daughters. The CEO of the clothing brand is his daughter or his daughter-in-law either way it's co-owned by one of his children and their spouse i find it funny that um all these women are meant to be serving him and raising children and um you know being completely submissive in the world and yet his own daughters are able to run a successful clothing brand and the other one is a high-flying lawyer like I mean yay they can do that but the double standard really 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 bothers me so this is the backstory on the cult I guess you're wondering why I'm talking about them in our true crime story time and it's not the usual tax fraud that you would be thinking of, but what else comes to mind when we talk about cults? There is always that sexual element. And our dear Mr. Salerno has been charged with several accounts of sexual assault on a minor. Those are young girls 
that we're encouraged to uh, wait on him. One of them, after leaving the cult and getting through, sorting through her headspace, she spoke out. So, our, our little our girl, who reported the assaults, the Daily Mail have called her Helen. I don't know if this is her real name. I hope to God it's not because I wish her every bit of peace in life. She says, she has said to media, she knew what was happening was wrong. And this is also, I believe, in her statement. But she felt isolated and scared, which these people, that's what they do. That's what they do to their victims. She felt like she had nowhere to go and no choice but to grin and bear it. Within the cult, members were not supposed to show much emotion. And crying was severely frowned upon. She was constantly belittled for her crying and for sh because it showed signs of weakness, according to them. And... So she was never, whilst her abuse was happening, never able to fully process what was happening because she had no safe place and she was made to feel like shit for having feelings in regards to the situation. She escaped the cult in 2009, so just after they had settled in the Kimberleys. But it still took her until 2012 to pluck up the courage to make her reports to the police about Salerno. And I mean, well done. I'm glad she got there. In her statement, she is reported to have said that she wishes she had the courage to fight him and get out sooner. But... Honestly, anyone in that situation, I think you're just going to be hard on yourself and once you do walk away and get out, you're going to wish that you did things sooner to make sure that justice came sooner. But, you know, it is what it is. It's a hard situation to deal with. It's hard to break away from. It's hard to confront. In 2018... James Salerno was on trial for unlawful sexual intercourse. He pled not guilty to all nine counts. The trial was conducted without a jury and was presided over by Judge Paul Slattery. Salerno was found guilty on eight counts. Um, he had repeatedly sexually assaulted this girl from the time she was 13 years old. Later that year, at a sentencing hearing, he was handed 10 years with a non-parole period of eight for the hundreds of assaults that happened over a five-year period. Hundreds. Like, I just, I am so mad. I am so mad at 10 years. That's not enough. Hmm. Raw. A few years later, in 2021, a retrial was granted in 2020. And so the next trial, 2021, Salerno was found guilty again. But only of six counts. So after the retrial was granted, he had been granted bail again. That was then revoked until his next sentencing hearing. In December 2020, he was sentenced to seven years, 11 months, and 16 days. And this time was determined by the allowed sentencing versus the time he had already served. His non-parole period was six years, one month, and 28 days. I am still angry. Salerno's lawyers tried to get leniency due to his notoriety and varying health conditions because, you know, they'll try and pull any trick in the 
book to try and get any shaving to the sentence. But Judge Davidson, who was pre presiding over this case, deemed him a serious repeat offender. Thank you for doing so. Salerno is appealing the ruling, of course, because he is. Why not? He genuinely believes he's innocent. And at the time of his crimes, he convinced his followings that his intentions were pure and that they should all try and emulate him. What the fuck, dude? What the fuck? Mr. Bradbury, who is the aforementioned documentary maker, he fully expects the group to carry on with out, like without their leader. They're still in the Kimberleys, apparently. And as stands, that is all that we have on the Kaipo cult. I mean, obviously, dude is appealing, so there's going to be more shit to come. And um, I'll keep you guys posted as I find things out. I'm sorry for no laughy and no jokes. A little bit hard on my own when I don't have my friend to bounce off of. Plus, it's not a very laughy story. I mean, usually make jokes to deal with all the shit, but yeah, got all serious on yours. But as I said, that is all I have for you this week. I'll keep you posted with updates as I have them. Thank you for watching, listening, whatever it is that you're doing to tune into our podcast. For those of you watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, leave us a comment down below on what you think or if you have any other information in regards to what has happened within the ideal human environment or if you'd like to let us know any other cases we could cover. If you would like to get in touch with us, you can hit us up over on Instagram. We are at Strange Colony 2.0. Or Twitter, we are at Strange Colony, and there is good old email, strangecolony at gmail.com. And until next week, I love you, bye bye. Mwah.